Good, happy Sunday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, AG investigates a deadly officer-involved shooting in Claremont. The Attorney General's office is investigating a officer-involved shooting that took place in Claremont early Sunday morning. Police went to a home on Congress Street around 4.50 a.m. following 911 call. Assistant Attorney General Peter Hickley said, Unfortunately, one person was killed and we provided that individual's name in the press release, but we cannot provide too much information at this point in time. Cody LaFont, 25 of Claremont, was fatally wounded during a confirmation with police officers, officials said. At this point, officials are not commenting on what led to the shooting. Just like every other case, it's an ex extensive investigation that just started in this case, Hickley said. No police officers were injured during the incident, officials said. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday to determine LaFont's exact cause of manner of death. In the meantime, neighbors are confused in looking for answers. The Attorney General's office is not saying if there was any video recording during the incident from either a dash cam or body camera. But the office did note that if there is any that could be released, it would be available at a later date. Hickley said this was an isolated incident and the people living in the area are not at risk. Stay with the Riley King Network for updates to this story as they become available. Hudson Police seek help in identifying credit card fraud suspect. The Hudson Police Department is looking for a suspect believed to have used a stolen credit card at a Walmart in Hudson. Police released an image of the suspect who is believed to have purchased four gift cards with the stolen credit card on August 21st. Hudson Police are asking anyone with information to call the police department at 603 8 Eight six six zero one one or crime line at six zero three five nine four one one five zero. Stay with the Riley King Network for updates to this story. And here's a photo of the suspect. This is the photo of the suspect. If you recognize him or know him, call Hudson Police. Police investigating fatal crash in West Merlin. State police are investigating a fatal crash that happened on Route 12 in West Merlin Saturday night. Officers responded to a rollover crash around 7.50 p.m. near Carpern Road. Laurier J. Valentine, 52, of Walpole, was driving north when she lost control of her car, police said. The vehicle crossed over into the southbound lane, went off the road, and flipped when it struck an embankment, officials said. Valentine was the only person in the car. She sustained, suffered fatal injuries. Part of Route 12 was closed for two and a half hours. 
State police were assisted by Westmoreland and Keene Fire Departments, Walpole Police and DOT crews. The crash is under investigation, but police believe that speed and alcohol may have been contributing factors to the crash. Crash reported on I-89. Concord Fire and rescue teams were sent to a crash on I-89 near mile marker 1 on the northbound side of the highway earlier this afternoon. According to reports online, the crash was reported at just after 3.30 p.m. on September 25, 2016, according to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation and Alerts Online. The professional firefighters of Concord, Local 1045, noted on Facebook that the accident occurred just a couple of hours after the shift teams were training for just this type of interpenment situation. The crews had the person out in eight minutes, according to the post online. The crash was cleared, according to New Hampshire DOT, at 5.05 p.m. Two Check out some of the training firefighters were involved in today via the, this video and check out the photos on professional con firefighters of Concord, New Hampshire, Local 1045 on their Facebook page. And here's a photo of the crash. This is a photo of the crash right here. Clinton Trump race narrows on the doorsteps of debates. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Talk about this uh, right now. I want to get the debates in a second. First, we got some new polls out this morning. New national polls showing that Hillary Clinton may be firming up her position, a six point lead now in the four way race. Although Donald Trump's still holding very close in those battleground states. Yeah, I think the fascinating thing about this race is the equilibrium of this race seems to be about Hillary with a three or four point lead. I think the problematic thing for Donald Trump is that he has never taken a lead in this football game. He's gotten in the red zone a number of different times, but never actually taken a lead. Yeah, and that brings us to the debates. You know, there's a big debate about debates, whether they matter or not. They tend to reinforce where the race is already heading. Some big exceptions, 1960, Kennedy Nixon, 1980. Ronald Reagan, and a lot of people think this year could be different as well. Well, I think it, I think these debates this year are going to matter more than anything else. We've seen Hillary Clinton spend $100 million on ads that had no effect on this race. You've seen Donald Trump add a whole new campaign team, not really an effect on this race. I remember in 2004, George Bush, who I was working for, had a six-point lead going into that first, first debate. Didn't do well. We came out of that debate dead even in this race, so I think that's the possibility for this. Second debate that flows from this is what's going to matter, what people actually see on Monday night or what they hear and talk about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, determining a debate winner is actually two different things. One, how do they perform on Monday night and what goes back and forth in that? But really, in the aftermath, what are people talking about? Al Gore won the first debate, but in the conversation in the aftermath of that in 2000, George Bush actually turned out to be the winner of the debate. Okay, Matt, Tom, thanks very much. I'm going to be anchoring our coverage of Monday's big debate. Whole team will be there as well. That's live at 9 Eastern right here. Lots of folks will be watching. Okay, and there you go on that report. Miami Merlin's star pitcher, Joe's Ferrandez, killed in a boating accident. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. Very sad tragic news out of the world of baseball. A star 
pitcher for the Miami Marlins, Jose Fernandez, was killed in a boating accident overnight. Officials say the 24-year-old All-Star and two other men were found dead after their 32-foot boat crashed near Miami Beach. The names of the other victims have not been released. Investigators point to speed as the cause of the accident. It does appear that speed was involved uh, due to the impact and the severity of it. Uh, it does appear to be that they were coming at full speed when they encountered the jetty and the accident happened. As of right now, uh, there was not much evidence on the vessel. Everything was in the water. Uh, there is no indication of alcohol or any type of illegal drugs involved. Uh, right now, the bodies are at our medical examiner's office, and uh, the autopsy will determine that. Mm, so sad. CNN sports analyst Christine Brennan joining me now. So Christine Fernandez, a huge star, and really he was even even still on the rise. What kind of impact will his death have on the Marlins, on baseball as a whole? This is devastating news. Uh, it's devastating if you lose anyone uh, in the prime of life at such a young age at 24. But Jose Fernandez was already a pillar of the community in Miami. Uh, and, and so this hits, I think, even harder because of what a wonderful personality he had. The future in baseball, uh, eventually becoming a $200 million pitcher. I mean, his, he was, he's, was one of the greatest pitchers in the game at 24. A power pitcher, just such a presence such a force on the baseball team and then in a community and when you consider that he defected to the United States at age 15 uh, he didn't come in as a superstar he came as a 15 year old went to high school in Tampa learned English but he had tried three other times to defect prior to that the, the time that he was successful so his love of this country wanting to come to the United States uh, throw that into the mix and this is just an unbelievable tragedy Okay, and there you go on that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday night. Good night, everyone. Bye.